All right. Hi, Scorpio. This is Carrie Mubarak at wooingnature.life. I hope everything is going really well for you. Welcome to your January reading for 2020. Um, we are all excited about reaching a new decade in the new millennium. And we are setting some foundations for the future, um, for a future, for generations to come. But we're also setting foundations for ourselves. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the astrology of the month and how it's affecting all of us. And then we'll get right into the readings. Um, and I'll talk about that next. But right now, um, what's happening is we are in 2020, numerologically 2020 breaks down to a four. So this is a um, four year for everybody. So it is about foundation building. It is about setting a new order for yourself or creating a new order for yourself. Um, you'll also be um, doing some nuts and bolts um, reorganization for some of you all. And when I say reorganization, it could be um, in your work structure. Some of you may be experiencing restructuring within your workplace, and um, that's where you may find it. For some of you, you are restructuring your life, um, your individual lives. Some of you are restructuring your family unit. Some of you are restructuring um, your relationships and restructuring how you are approaching your relationships. So to me, what I feel like this is, is sort of a, a new rules, a time for developing new rules, but also setting a firm foundation and a clear foundation moving forward for yourself so that you can really reach um, the highest level of elevation that you can reach in this lifetime. So we are doing some rapid growth and because of that, some restructuring is needed and this was all in the stars. This was all going to happen. We're all prepared, um, have been well prepared and are continuing to be well prepared and our planetary sisters are making sure that that's happening. So so regarding the um, the astrology of January, I've had a chance to take a look at it and without looking at too much detail, the most glaring thing is the lineup of planets that we have in Capricorn in the month of January. So we have um, Pluto and Saturn who have been there before and there is a video that I have on, on this channel about Pluto and Saturn if you want to take a look at that and, and find out more about what that means. Um, so they've been there and they've been um, sort of ushering in the changes that we need in order to assimilate this this new energy in the process of ascension um, which has been going on for a long long time this is not new it's not new it's not new you know change takes place over very long periods of time lifetimes even um, so this is not new, but yes, they're, they're, everybody is going to be going through a series of ascension processes until we as a collective or we as humanity can raise our energy vibration up and God knows we need it. Um, so this restructuring that's happening is really setting the foundation for that. So that's the real big, bigger picture. But then how does that apply to you personally? Um, you are going to have to restructure how you, um, do a lot of things, how you work, how you sleep, how you, um, uh, make your money, um, how you engage in a relationship, um, for those of you who have been um, experiencing conflict in any of those areas or difficulty in any of those areas, that's letting you know what you need to pay attention to and where the most change is needed. So wherever those feelings creep up, um, it could be anxiety, it could be depression, it could also be um, just anger, like if you feel uh, very angry about a situation, um, any of those negative emotions that bring up inner conflict conflict for yourself, a jealousy, envy, things that you may feel jealous or envious about, resentful. These are kind of some trigger emotions that'll let you know where you may be, um, where you need to pay some attention and where some restructuring may need to happen. And restructuring happens first within the mind because the mind is something that will activate, um, it's an activator. And so whatever you're thinking gets activated and manifests. So there may be some adjustments in thinking for some of you um, Scorpios out there. 
um, during the month of January to try to put everything in motion. Because your ruling planet is Pluto, Scorpio, this will have a significant effect on you. For some of you, you may be feeling that more. For some of you, it's not going to bother you at all because you're kind of at home with those feelings. And I think out of everybody in the Zodiac, Scorpio probably is the most at home with kind of this... Um, this Pluto sense of um, diving deep and 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 um, and requiring um, some a change or requiring um, there to be some different um, um, auspices for yourself or some different um, um, ways of operation on a personal level. So I think that many of you will be kind of comfortable with that, even though there may be some discomforts. The thing to remember about the discomfort and the conflict is that that's how you're growing. So whenever there's conflict, heavy conflict, deep conflict, um, intense conflict, it's, it's, it's really that Pluto energy is really digging, 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 digging. And it wants you to find, um, understanding and it wants you to let that be a point of release okay um let's see anything else so that those are two planets that are in capricorn capricorn as a sign is strictly business organization responsibility um it also rules over delays or um apparent um apparent delays and things or things that appear to be delayed or restricted or things like that. So, um, but it's also about structure. And so, um, that restructuring energy comes from the, the lineup in, in Capricorn. Two other planets that are in Capricorn are Jupiter, which is a, which gives us this kind of ebb and flow, push and pull. We want to expand, but we got to contract. We got to expand and contract. And if you think about your muscles, your muscles, expand and contract but if you keep your muscle contracted for too long it hurts if anybody's ever tried to do that like constrict constrict your muscle and just keep it there after a while it's going to hurt it has to release um in order for you know the the muscle to build okay and so that jupiter saturn thing that's going on because saturn rules capricorn that jupiter saturn energy going on in capricorn is expanding your opportunities and restricting opportunities, expanding and restricting. Um, and, and, and that's by design. It's so that you can assimilate the new information, the new frequencies, the new vibrations. You can do all of that um, a little bit easier or it, in a more balanced fashion. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Okay, Mercury is also in Capricorn. So that means your communication is probably going to be more succinct or that your communication needs to be about, um, um, about the new rules. So you may be in your relationships, whether they're work or um, romantic or family relationships, you may find yourself where you are setting new boundaries, letting people know what you are and are not going to do. Um, that may feel um, a little different for people, but it is something that has to happen. And it has to happen um, because again, we're restructuring. We're, we're, we, are, we are looking at where we are moving into the next decade, into the next millennium, and how we as an individual are contributing to that change and so that change has to happen within and in order for the change to happen within we have to be in alignment with our true nature with our true self and with our true purpose we have to be in a place of acceptance about that and then we have to operate from there or operate from the heart out is how I like to think about it you're operating from your core inner being who you are spiritually out into the world and that um that automatically creates a balance for yourself and it also creates balance in in your immediate environment or uh with the people that you are touching and communicating with um um on at whatever level that you are or wherever this exists for you if you want to find out like where it's touching you or where you may um, be feeling that more, you can get a personal astrological reading with the transits and with the transits, we can look and see where this lineup is happening in your, um, natal and, um, to you natally or, or, or energetically who, how that's affecting you is what that basically means. And so, um, um, and you can reach out to me. My information is at the bottom. If you want to reach out there, you can do that and we can take a look at that. 
All right, so that's the astrology for January, the, the bigger picture. If you want to look at other things that are happening astrologically, check back in for the new moon and the full moon view, which I uh, do more lunar astrology on those days. But I will also be talking a little bit about some of the astrology that's associated with the moon at that time. So you can get um, some other tidbits there. All right, so that's the astrology. Um, I For this video and for January, what I'm doing is sort of a sampling of readings, and that's so that you all will get a sense of um, um, what the readings are like. Or you get a sense of what each kind of reading is like, but also it'll give us kind of a thorough, circumspect view of what's happening um, with you um, in January. And, um, I'm also recommending for everybody to use this video, this January video as a year long guide. So periodically come back to January, take a look at it, listen to it again and see where you are in relationship to the information you're getting today, because January is really setting the foundation in more ways than one, not just because we're going into a four year, but also because of that lineup that I talked to you about in Capricorn. So it's really a, a pace setter um, for all of us. And so it'd be really good to kind of get in sync with that. All right. So I'm going to start off with the medicine wheel reading and I'll be reading from the mystical shaman Oracle. And um, the medicine wheel pulls four, uh, excuse me, five cards, one um, in the center, which kind of gives us an overview or a sense of where you are right now, um, Scorpio. And then I'll pull four other cards that'll go in the north, south, east, and west positions. Those positions correspond to um, the elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And then those break down into personality, um, down into your own personal um, cipher as your physical, your mental, your emotional, and your spiritual. So it's pretty con comprehensive spread in a five card um, reading for those of you who are interested. The medicine wheel is a Native American construct that deals with healing and teaching. And so these are methods for healing and teaching. So if you want to find out how to reach a balance within yourself and be balanced within nature, this information will allow you to um, find a better balance in your life. And balance, of course, represents healing. Balance also represents the optimal state of health. So Scorpio, right here in the middle, appropriately, we have the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel, again, I just explained what it is. As you can see, there are animals here. There's a snake, there's a leopard, there's a bird. It, it means all that is, everyone and all of the beings that exist in, um, in nature and in our sky nations, our earth nations, underworld, upper world, all of it is a part of this wheel. It's a part of your cipher. Um, so you are ciphering this month. You are um, really looking at what is happening around you, in you and around you. And you want to keep that circle close. You want to keep that circle close because there's a lot of other things going on right now. Um, outside of your immediate circle that can kind of get you off course or can get you could, could cause um, over you to be overwhelmed um, or it could be TMI like way too much information for you right now Scorpio so keep this circle fairly close we're talking about yourself um, the center represents the self so your wheel right now or the wheel or the cipher that you're operating in is really yourself um, so you want to look at all points, your physical, your mental, your emotional, and your spiritual side. You'll want to examine those during the month of January and really make a good assessment. Um, if there's any imbalances there, if you need to exercise more or get your finances together uh, more, or maybe you need to have more fun um, and be less serious, all of that is a part of you being able to find your medicine. And we're going to get um, from these other cards more about your medicine. Um, the first thing that I'm seeing, and I, I'm going in a little bit different. Normally I go south and west and north and then the east, but this is jumping out at me because we talked about medicine. This is the sweat lodge is sitting in your north position, um, which is a place of wisdom, knowledge, um, information, things that come down from those that are older than you, advice, um, it could come in the form of advice as well. But this is look looks like the sweat lodge is a good place for you. The sweat lodge is where people would go in 
um, to purify themselves, to cleanse themselves, um, both physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Um, it um, can be a place of vision uh, for people as well. So it's cleansing yourself for the vision so that you can see clearly, so that you can um, um, move forward with what it is that you are designed to do and that is in alignment with your purpose. So I feel like this card of the self and the cipher and the medicine wheel really being about you and not being about, you know, your family or a community. It's really about you. That this is um, the advice that's coming through is for you to purge, cleanse, purify, and, um, and reach your vision or find a vision for yourself in January or allow the vision to come. In the South, which sits opposite that, is flow and i'm seeing the water here the water energy here um i'm also seeing oh yeah lots of water energy here um and that that water the 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 water so water is associated with emotions so you want to go to your place of emotions and there is where you're going to be able to um one manage the emotions um learn how emotions are affecting you and how um, your affectation by the emotions is then um, how it's distributed, how you how it affects other people or where it affects other things in your life. So you're really learning about how to control that emotional energy in you, Scorpio, um, at this time. And I think it's interesting that we have water. Sweat is water. It's in it's water coming out of your body, literally. Um, and then water represents emotions, but then the word is to flow. So flowing, learning how to be in your flow, um, going with the flow, moving with the grace of the water is what I'm hearing, riding the wave, getting in with the current, all of that are, uh, would apply to this. And ultimately, though, it's about you being able to... I want to say control water. That's what I'm hearing is being able to control water. Now, we know we can't control water, but what you're doing is controlling the emotion or you're controlling what the element water represents. Um, and then it's not about control like is in that, that negative connotation of control. It's about how to utilize that energy. And that's um, a real important power. You are a water sign. You know that. Um, some of you may know it, but you are a water sign. And so this is really um, significant. So if this is what you're learning about right now, that means you don't really know about the power of water or you haven't tapped in to water as an energy source or a spiritual power source, then I would recommend that you do that. And, and there are people or, you know, you can hit me up and we can talk about that. All right. So um, in the West, which is the looks within place, we have the drum. The drum represents rhythm. It represents being able to flow with the rhythm. And drums also connect us through sound to um, other entities. So if there are, if you're doing ancestor work or past life work, um, or um, you need to work with your spirit guides or your ascendant masters or your ancient um, teachers, any of that, then you'll want to do that through the drum. Um, drumming um, workshops or places where people can drum around you. Um, what do we call these journeys, journeying meditation? I recommend that too. Um, what it is is that you go into meditation, but you go into meditation with the drum. So there's a, a, a rhythm um, that will allow you to go back to that place. But I'm seeing that the drum is a very significant instrument in you being able to tap the inner resources and the inner powers that come from um, your past lives or from your ancestry. You've got to connect in that way. So sound meditation would be good. Rattles are also an alternative there, but I would recommend that you get with a drummer or get with somebody who um, who does drumming, like past life regression, but through drumming, or they can drum you. That's what we call it, but anyway. And then the East, in the East position, we have thunder. And what I love about this card is it's not lightning thunder, it's the thunder of the buffalo. So this is a call, again, from the past. It's a call from 
um, a nation of, of people who understand earth and who understand the power within earth and, and their totems and their energies and the power of the buffalo. And when the buffalo roamed and during that time when the buffalo roamed freely and they were in abundance, it would create a thunder. So your footsteps are the thunder. The way you are moving through the world is the thunder. It's going to be the thing that is going to shake people up. Um, and so this time in January is really preparing you for this because the East Gate is 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 what's next. The East Gate represents the open gateway to the next um, part of your journey and your experience. And so what you can expect, Scorpio, is to shake up some things and to shake some people up. And like I said, with that astrology, with um, Pluto being in, Sa in Saturn, um, your energy is quite serious in this regard and for good reason. So don't judge yourself there. Just go forth and, and, and multiply. Go do your thing. Connect with other Scorpio people around you, other water sign people around you. Don't forget to go with the flow and um, don't let anybody make you dance to the beat of their drum. Okay. All right. So that is the medicine wheel reading for you. I am adding to that a totem card and the totem card is the white raven, the white raven spirit. Now, I don't know the difference between the white raven and the dark raven, but I do know about the raven. So that's what I'm going to talk about. This is in my background is at, um, my background, a lot of my spiritual background began with the study of animals. So I use these cards, but I don't really use the book or anything. I just go by what I know because I know that that's um, a good way for you to really truly con connect to the animal kingdom, not through a card, but for real though. All right. So we're talking about the raven. The raven is associated with magic. The raven is associated with the corvid family and the corvid family of birds are considered to be the most intelligent birds. So use your intelligence, walk with your intelligence. Um, the white, I'm going to say, would have to deal with a, a, a purification. Again, we talked about the sweat lodge and purifying yourself for this purpose, but this is the totem animal that you'll, you're going to be walking with throughout the month of January. And the raven is, um, again, an intelligent animal associated with magic, but the magic of your own intelligence and your intelligence, Scorpio, takes you to some very deep places. It takes you to some very spiritual places. And this is where the raven likes to hang out. And so, um, just really honor that spirit within you. I feel like this um, this raven spirit really is a, a, a very Scorpio um, animal, and so um, as you're walking with the Scorpio with the Scorpio animal, just remember that you are your own best asset. You are your own best asset at this time. Okay. All right, so that's Medicine Wheel. That is um, Animal Totem. I am going to also read the I Ching for you. We're going to pull from Klaus Holitska's I Ching cards. Um, you can also do an I Ching reading with the Yarrow Stalks. I do the Yarrow Stalks, and I also do um, Coin Method. Most people are familiar with the Coin Method, but there's a few methods of... of um, of building the hexagram. These are cards, so they're quicker, and that's why I'm using them for this, but I really do like um, the divination method for this, and I've gotten some really good insight from it, so um, I trust it for you. All right, so we're going to pull a card for Scorpio for the month of January for the E chain. Thank you. And we're also going to pull a changing card so that we can look at the changing lines. Thank you there. And then this um, passage or this card number corresponds to a passage in the I Ching. I'm going to use the book um, that comes with this um, deck, but there, you know, there's lots of different interpretations of the I Ching, and um, and uh, this one I think is pretty concise and and to the point, but it doesn't stray too far from other interpretations. All right, so I like this card, Scorpio, because look at this temple that you're building. My God, look at this person here in meditation, sitting on the red carpet. <laughs> and then there's this um, other mountain in the background or over um, your head that to me feels like you're building that just from sitting, just from being. And this same image is, is 
I'm, I'm going back to the um, to the sweat lodge image. I'm seeing both of these together. See that? And that. All right. So this card corresponds to restriction, the passage called restriction. It says this sign suggests that you should watch out for extremes of any kind. You will then find the right path for yourself. Otherwise, you will drift like a rudderless vessel in a sea of possibilities and lose yourself in a lack of commitment. The restriction concerns the realms of ideas, ideas as well as the material. It calls for insight, discipline, and moderation, but the effort is worthwhile. You overcome bad times without incurring substantial loss and still have your sense of reality in good times. Clear guidelines help in keeping to the imposed restrictions. You should not be too inflexible, though. You have to understand that restriction is just a means to an end. A restriction in your own nature leads to atrophy, while incommensurate restriction with other people triggers off indignation. So lots of um, good information about restriction. Um, because we are talking about this very heavy Saturn period astrologically, Saturn and, um, and Capricorn or that Capricorn lineup that I was talking to you about plus Saturn and Capricorn, there's a lot um, of restriction in, the, in Saturn and in Capricorn. So again, like I said, because Pluto is also in Capricorn, you may be feeling it differently or you may be feeling it a little more. Um, so this is talking about how to handle it, really. So when you're feeling that restriction, when you're feeling that pull, um, just remember what it's all about. Watching out for extremes, which means bringing things to balance. Meditation brings things to balance and helps you to overcome that. Um, keeping you from kind of being adrift. So it kind of centers you and gives you some foundation. Um, um, let's see, it talks about having insight, discipline, and moderation because you may have great ideas, but you have to have discipline and moderation in order to be able to carry them out. So there's some good information here um, for sure, for certain, um, for you, uh, Scorpio, and especially if you are feeling that, just rewind and play it, play it back if you need to. All right, so the changing lines come from passage 29. Those changing lines are number one, um... And that's it, just number one. So I'm just going to be reading one line one, um, which means this is really significant to all of you. Line one says, are apparently insurmountable obstacles standing in your way? Then stop. Accept the limitations imposed upon you. Gather your strength to proceed vigorously at the appointed time. So it's time to just take a pause. Um, January, take your pause for those of you, uh, for those of you for whom this applies, it's time to just take a pause. If you are reaching op obstacles, just be still and let it be and know that there is a greater message here. It could be a message of protection. It could be something protecting you, um, from something that is unforeseen or that you cannot see at this time. So again, go with the flow. All right. All right. So we're moving right along into your wealth. This is a wealth reading. Um, what I'm going to do is read from the law of attraction cards. I like these a lot because it helps you reset your mind around your money. And if you're having issues with finances or you want to grow financially, or you're trying to manifest something or attract, um, money or other things into your life. A lot of times if, if there's a blockage there or if there is a restriction in that regard, then what happens is you want to um, um, change your mindset. When you change your mindset, everything else around you changes. So I like these. So we'll be reading from this Oracle. And then I'm going to pull three cards from the tarot to kind of shore up our bet here. Um, I'll be looking at, uh, with those three cards. I'm going to be looking at what your current mindset is around money. I'm also going to be looking at whatever your past experiences or past influences that are influencing your current mindset. And then we'll look at what you need to do moving forward. So um, this card says, my every story 
is attracting its vibrational match. So every time you say, uh, have a story about money or whatever your story is about money, it has a vibrational match. So you're matching vibration with the story that you're telling. The message says every thought that you think is vibrating at a very personal frequency and by the powerful law of attraction, the essence of that which is like unto itself is drawn. That thought is now attracting another thought that is its a vibrational match. And now those combined thoughts are vibrating at a frequency that is higher than the thought that came before. And they will now, by law of attraction, attract another and another and another until eventually the thoughts will be powerful enough to attract a real life situation or manifestation. So I want you to think about your thoughts around money, what you've been thinking about money, what have been the underlying stories, or what are your repeats? Like whenever there's conversations about money and finances, what do you find yourself saying over and over and over again? Because that's your story. And as you are um, having these thoughts and as you are speaking this or as you are thinking it, it's creating a vibrational match of that thing. So if you are not happy with your financial situation, look at the story that you're telling yourself and look at what um, it, what is being reverberated in the universe regarding your money. All right, so I am going to take a look at these three cards. The first card, please, for Scorpio, January 20 for wealth, represents the current mindset. The second card is past influences. Past influences that are, or past experiences, that's what I mean. Past experiences that are influencing your mindset. Past experiences influencing the current mindset for Scorpio. Thank you. I didn't want to give that one up. <laughs> All right. And then the last card is next steps for Scorpio and the finances. Thank you. Okay. All righty. So current mindset right now is judgment. You're waiting on your ship to come in. You're waiting for the right moment, the right time, the right timing. Um, luck is really about timing and preparation. So um, you are probably reflecting right now on how you've prepared for that moment and you're sitting on the precipice waiting for um, the change to come, literally waiting for a change to come. Um, that mindset is being influenced by the two of pinnacles. It's balance. And so lucky for you, you have reached some level of balance in your recent past that has allowed you to be in the position to receive and be in the place of timing. So if you have been waiting for your finances to come together, don't forget to pay attention to your story. But if you feel like your story is a positive one and that you're operating in the right mindset, then you can anticipate in, in January because you have been preparing that you are in the right timing to receive that which you've been looking for. Moving forward, we have the Seven of Cups. What that means for me is that there's a lot of opportunities or a lot of things that are going to come um, towards you that will allow you to either make money or um, for you to be in a place of wealth or for you to be able to manifest what you want. You are going to have to discern, though, um, Scorpio, which things are the right things for you. So it's not going to all uh, come wrapped up in a nice, neat bow for you. Um, now that you're in the time. I mean, there's going to be lots of things uh, coming your way or lots of opportunities coming your way that will allow you to um, to build on your finances that could come in the form of a job. It could also come in the form of a um, opportunity, some kind of financial opportunity. It could be an investment or, or an opportunity to invest. But and then you'll have to make sure that you're investing properly. Uh, for those of you who are playing the stock market, you can look now and see what's going on. Um, see what you can um, tap into and what you can buy or if you're looking to sell, either way it goes. Um, this is about being able to build wealth and um, and the uh, ways and means for that coming towards you. It could come in any form. It could come in the form of advice. It could come in the form of opportunities, jobs, like I said, investments, all of that. But still, you're going to have to discern. So the next step for you in terms of your money is being able to um, one, 
make sure that your mindset is right. Make sure that you are um, telling a uh, story of wealth and not a story of poverty or the story of lack. And then also discerning um, what's coming through for you to acquire that wealth and making sure that you're making good choices. All right, and the last reading is the love reading. I am reading from Orna Ben Shoshan. Um, she is, uh, this is the alphabet of love. I love these little cards. Um, these are connected to the Kabbalah, so if you're studying the Kabbalah, I'll have some information for you there. Um, I like to look at the images. There's an image, and then on the back of the card, there's a little statement. Sometimes those match up for me, and sometimes they don't. It just depends, but I'll just give you a chance to kind of just see the image, you and your partner, whoever that is. For those of you who are in a love relationship right now, this can reflect to you or might resonate with you how you feel. That's a very curious way of balancing, that's for sure. Um, so they're <laughs> of balancing each other. Um, I can see that right away. For those of you who are single, you may be feeling a little bit like this or feeling like, uh, you know, uh, finding a par partnership may be create this kind of... Um, uh, kind of experience for you. But either way it goes, if you're in a partnership or not, this could also relate to other relationships. So if you have a soulmate partnership with someone who's not your lover or who's not who you're not romantically involved in, this could also be information for you as well. Love comes in many forms, shapes, and sizes. You got to get it in where you fit it in. The back of this card says optimism guards from all troubles. So being optimistic is um, the word that is coming from from this passage. What I see here is, again, a very curious balance. It's almost like there's one person who has their hand on the ground and the other person is kind of um, in the air. Um, and um, and it doesn't seem like it's any, this person doesn't feel bad about it, but it's, like I said, it's a very curious balance. I'll be interested to see um, what the text has to say about this relationship. So I'm going to go right to the text. This is card number 26. This corresponds to a Hebrew letter, um, the Hebrew letter Teth. And so um, I'm going to look up the passage and read from that. It's a pretty extensive reading that comes from these cards. So um, <clears throat> what I'm, my recommendation is, is just to kind of listen to the information, let it fall over you and um, what resonates with you or what sparks an interest in you. Let that be kind of um, where you apply the information that you're hearing to your situation. Um, some of these may apply to you. Some of them may not. So if you hear things that are negative or not, you're going to know whether that's you or not, because it's going to hit you in your heart. All right. So this is the letter Teth. It's the ninth letter. So the number nine may be significant to you. Um, it's associated with Leo in the month of August. So if you are dating someone with a birthday in August or you have an anniversary in August or special days in August, this may relate to you. If you are with a Leo person or someone with Leo significantly placed in their chart, this may also apply to you. It's associated with the fire element. Um, which sits across from you, water element, water and fire, kind of op opposites, opposites do attract. And it leads from the Sephira, Hokma and Tiferet, so wisdom and beauty, wisdom and beauty. So there's wisdom and beauty here that, um, that this relationship kind of falls in. And it's also associated in tarot with the strength card. So for those of you who are studying the Kabbalah, or who um, know the Kabbalistic standards and, and practices and all of that that goes with that. I might be pronouncing it wrong. I'm going to try to get that together in 2020 because I'm studying or restudying the Kabbalah myself. I started years ago and I didn't finish, so now I have to go back and, and pick up where I left off. Um, so if any of you are going back to school, after a long time of being out of school, you'll understand my pain. All right, so this is number 26. And um, there's there's layers here. So there's a general reading. There's a reading for those people who are single. So that those of you who are in relationships, those of you who are single, um, this will relate. And then there's uh, personality. So personalities in the relationship or personalities to look for in a relationship. And then there's some advice. So I'll read all of it for you. 
Optimism will help you shake off complex situations, sweep away and clean harsh energies. Seeing the goodness that is hidden in any situation will ease your life and allow you to appreciate an existing relationship. In order to overcome external factors that threaten the integrity of your union, you should concentrate on what happens inside of it. Okay, The good energies that you spread around you will light the way for your partner's journey and attract abundance into your lives. Health, good, lively, uh, health, good livelihood, warmth, paternal protection, stability, and happiness. This relationship resembles a trip to new realms in which you will learn a lot about your sexuality. Together you, together you form an energetic powerhouse with intense sexuality and mutual attraction. The, um, the woman or the femme in the relationship or the person who represents the femme in the relationship is the stronger of the two and their good intent, intuition and wisdom controls the person who is the masculine in the relationship with tenderness, caring, and diplomacy. The significant other needs much attention, empowerment, and support, especially to be rescued from themselves. Therefore, the relationship is driven by a great inner wisdom and success is guaranteed. If you do not get what you want right now, it is still the right relationship for you. Notwithstanding the ability to see the positive side of every situation, be careful of naive and careless thinking, which can lead to complacency and indifference. For singles, when working on a new relationship, if you encounter obstacles and challenges that arise from the external environment, remember that you know what's best for you. Do not let any factor interfere with your decisions. Even if the relationship evolving now will not last forever, it will contribute to a lot of your personal growth. As far as personality is concerned, you're talking about an optimist, typically in innocent person, and this could be you, Scorpio, or somebody else, um, or the significant other, or it could be the person that you're looking for. So just kind of take the personality and apply it where it fits. Um, this is a person full of vitality and joy for life, has good intuition, inner wisdom, and even prophetic abilities. That sounds like you, Scorpio. Cordial and frank, generally fair and honest, unless his, uh, his or her honor is compromised. Um, loves being in the spotlight, needs much attention, thinks big, and is not content with simply following orders. An excellent manager and organizer. Sometimes they can be a fanatic about the worldview and not and will not change their opinions easily. And the advice is strengthen your awareness of the good things in your life, even if they are not visible. Inner wisdom takes time to be exposed. If if you if you focus on the inner essence of the union, no outside influence can ever harm it. An optimistic person attracts the absolute best and is protected from the negative external energies. Okay, so um, just an interesting interesting in terms of relationships, um, Scorpio. Um, it's an interesting balance. It's an intricate balance, but it's your balance. So um, again, they talk about not being concerned about what other people might think about what's happening inside your relationship. If your relationship is balanced in its own way and you like it and it's working for you, then keep going with it. Again, go with the flow. Um, if you're single, you're looking for, look at some of those personality traits, look at your personality traits within yourself and see how it's affecting your relationship. And you can also start to see how you're mirroring each other, um, too. All right. So that concludes this January thorough reading. Um, I hope you've gotten something out of it. Again, revisit this January reading throughout the year so that you can kind of get a handle and a balance on what's happening throughout 2020. Um, if you need to get a personal reading, you can do so by reaching out to me. I'm at Carrie, K-E-R-R-I at wooingnature.life. As always, I hope you have a great January and a wonderful life.